and then governance cloud perspective and the risk perspective okay so actors in the sense so who are the important identity uh, identify key stakeholders okay stakeholders in the sense uh, who owns the cloud strategy owns the cloud policy cloud service owner asset owner data owner cloud uh, who manages the cloud service right so uh, in the starting itself we need to check all these things who is the risk owner asset owner okay uh, so who who are going who is going to included in this one okay and the service risk owner and managers okay who is the program owner uh, who is the responsible accountability okay all the aspects we are going to cover okay in the actors itself uh, we need to take care of those things when it comes to business uh, or organization part okay uh, cloud compliance program needs to consider different points of point of view balancing the perspective of the business with the cloud computing perspective okay when it is comes to a uh, business uh, nature of the business what exactly they are into okay whether uh, you uh, selected compliances or framework is applicable to that business okay uh, is uh, they are using uh, which type of cloud module okay and then whether they are using private cloud or public cloud or a combination of both okay that is also matters a much uh, while doing the audit and market share position market geolocation geolocation is the uh, biggest uh, thing in the uh, compliance auditing okay uh, then level of it uh, all other aspects to cover in that one then comes to the uh, governance okay so when it it is governance so governance in the sense whole organization uh, added to the uh, requirements okay uh, so it may be a government uh, governance requirement may be a business requirement uh, cost we are, we are going to check the cost compliance requirement portability okay uh, then security requirement uh, where are the uh, where is the headquarters branch offices all the other aspects we are going to cover okay uh, which business sectors does it serve okay we need to uh, uh, consider that one also in the governance part internal policies uh, then again uh, it, uh, when we are doing the uh, nor, uh, traditional as well as cloud whatever it is uh, in the compliance part auditing part there are three stages uh, three types of auditing first uh, internal auditing uh, and the second party and the third party the, so third party in the sense uh, certification board itself okay then again uh, applicable laws and regulations uh, based on the location the geolocation and uh, whether uh, it is applicable or not we are going to consider uh, on that part and technical standards relevant certification and attestants okay so uh, cloud service providers and organization system uh, consideration the objective of a cloud compliance program is to ensure that all aspects of a cloud adoption in an organization added to the requirements for which it is accountable. So when you are doing a traditional auditing, uh, it may be like, uh, so you have on-site uh, premises uh, details, complete infrastructure in front of you itself. You can uh, check all the activities. You can collect all the audit details, audit reports. But when it comes to cloud, multi-cloud compliance auditing, okay so uh, there is no transparency okay so if they are using a uh, sas pass uh, uh, okay so that moment you cannot collect much details or uh, you don't have uh, much control on the uh, details correct uh, so uh, so governance in the sense like uh, there are uh, one aspect we are going to check enterprise risk management so enterprise risk management means so it covers everything in that organization okay complete enterprise complete business it is going to cover it may be uh, physical and environmental controls operational controls okay everything it covers uh, information risk management information controls uh, top management controls everything okay so uh, here we are going to uh, concentrate on information security uh, information risk management um, a risk in the sense whatever uh, it is uh, uh, there okay uh, if it is uh, threatening to the uh, 
company that organization so we are not we are going to uh, check that risk okay what is that risk how we are going to mitigate on uh, all the things okay and then information security so okay uh, so cloud governance so cloud governance uh, in the sense so uh, again uh, so we don't have much uh, uh, accountability on the uh, csp service uh, cloud service providers right uh, so based on that one uh, where our data is storing uh, what type of data it is storing okay uh, locations all other terms are going to cover in that part uh, cloud governance gaps so while doing any audit okay so first part we are going to concentrate on gaps gap analysis okay uh, so most of the companies are using multi cloud environment because of cost management okay and uh, easy to manage or something like that so that's why most of the companies adopting uh, what i saw is around 70 70% 70, 70 plus companies uh, 70% plus companies are uh, using multi cloud uh, environment itself uh, which uh, is easy to uh, manage okay compliance and regulations uh, uh, then resilience okay uh, so that is also a gap uh, in cloud governance then portability again uh, so portability in the sense uh, lock in periods will be there uh, if you, if you are using aws azure or google cloud okay if you if you are already uh, comfortable with that one okay you cannot easily uh, go out or uh, adapt another uh, cloud platform because of uh, portability or lock-in period uh, thing okay so again uh, so in the cloud platform uh, the major aspect is sa okay service level agreement okay so uh, while doing the auditing uh, or if you are using any cloud platform okay that moment what happens no like uh, you have to check uh, uh, so as an auditor uh, you need to uh, check data and other things. Uh, I am, I am uh, network security, uh, cryptography uh, controls, all other aspects. Okay. Uh, so uh, whether it is a cloud uh, service providers or uh, con uh, have uh, implemented those controls from their side. Okay. Uh, if you are using a shared responsibility model, like if you are using SaaS, okay, application runtime, middleware operating system everything will be controlled by cloud service provider itself right so that moment you don't have that much access or you don't have anything from your end what you have to do is you have to collect all the logs and check whether those regulations or details are in the place or not okay uh, service uh, cloud service providers is responsible for, uh, for all these things but still customer uh, is accountable for the data or applications or uh, logs, okay, how you are using based on your requirement. Uh, some companies uh, may go with the SaaS, some companies may go with the uh, PaaS and uh, infrastructure, okay, based on the requirement, you need to collect those things. So SLA is the uh, service level agreement. So that agreement shows that you are uh, dealing with this particular cloud platform and you are implemented these kind of uh, security uh, policies compliance in that cloud platform okay uh, that is the only accountability uh, we can see in the cloud platform other than that if there is no agreement then uh, we don't have anything to prove right uh, in that cloud platform whether it is secure or not correct so as an auditor you may you may implementing iso or uh, SOC type two, you may do doing auditing on that one, that part, or NIST COVID-19, okay? Uh, so you need to check uh, SLA, and then only you can have some understanding on that part. So main aspect is you need to cover these gaps in the first itself, okay? So then uh, uh, already we discussed about enterprise risk management, overall uh, management of risk for an organization. Then again, information uh, risk management, okay? So it focus uh, on information of the organization, okay? So IS risk, uh, information security risk, risk in the sense potential that a given threat will exploit vulnerabilities of an asset and uh, thereby cause harm to the organization. Any risk you can take, okay? 
so how you are going to calculate uh, risk uh, likelihood and the consequence or impact uh, is equal to a risk okay uh, so here uh, encountering a risk vulnerability and threat uh, is the main aspect here uh, what is vulnerability uh, weakness in a uh, in this system okay uh, so include uh, weak coding uh, missing antiviruses and weak access controls okay access control role based control all other things weak access controls uh, weak network security uh, weak system management everything covers in the vulnerability so if attackers or hackers find out the any uh, weakness in the system they can exploit with the help of threat threat in, uh, in the sense something that can exploit a weakness okay includes hackers uh, malware criminals uh, natural disaster okay natural disaster in the sense uh, 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 earthquake or something like that okay uh, so when you encounter a risk when you uh, got any risk so how you are going to respond to that risk a risk uh, response methodology are there okay so avoidance uh, mitigate transfer that risk or accept that risk okay so we're going to discuss about those risks uh, we'll come back to this part again okay uh, in risk assessment methodology there are three types one is asset based another one is event based and uh, threat based risk assessment okay so asset uh, based the risk what is asset so can anyone uh, answer in chat Yes, I would be looking at it, but no question so far. Okay. Yeah, and there is only a question whether the recording would be available. I'm just responding to that. Okay. Uh, so can anyone answer what is asset to a organization or a company? Okay, I can see and uh, Pratsna mentioned about assessment based on people, pro process and technology. Okay. So I hope uh, in the audience section, uh, there are a few uh, uh, auditors are there, I guess. Okay. Asset is which brings value to the company. Exactly. Uh, Ramachandra, right? So yes. So asset uh, in which the it adds value to the company. It may be information. Okay. Uh, intellectual property, if you are developing something uh, from, from that organization. Softwares, hardware, people, are also asset to the organization, right? What if uh, someone, uh, uh, your hardware, software, data, employee, exactly, right? Uh, so these are the asset to the company. These are, the, uh, yeah, they are valuable to the organization, right? Then again comes to the event based. From that aspect also, we encounter many uh, risk from asset based bits okay even human based it may be intentionally or unintentionally right so for example uh, so if you are working in an organization uh, if you goes to audit uh, that organization okay uh, from email uh, they may receive a phishing link or a phishing page whatever it is okay they may click or they may install uh, unknown application into that organization it may spread all over the organization that is also 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 risk from the asset correct from the human error. So 70% of the organization face a uh, risk from the human error itself. Okay, insider threats, malicious insider, we can say even more. Okay, it may be intentionally or, or unintentionally, it, it is going to happen, correct. So yeah, uh, so next one is uh, event-based. So event-based risk means, uh, so can anyone answer uh, that one? event based what exactly uh, event based means event based or uh, risk managed assessment so any event uh, it may be uh, so already we discussed here uh, like uh, hackers malware criminals natural disaster okay any event we may face, right? Yes, uh, anyone uh, like event-based risk 
assessment what is event based risk so someone hacked into your system that is also event event based plus uh, a risk natural disaster that is also event based risk correct okay so then comes to the uh, threat based threat based is the combination of both asset and event based uh, so that covers complete uh, it uh, assets uh, complete organization okay uh, so threat based is a, a more comprehensive auditing uh, risk assessment methodology we are going to use okay so uh, here are some cautionary uh, like uh, are there okay uh, if uh, we are using email system okay or uh, so that is a threat email hacking a malicious insider ddos attack so what is the vulnerability for this one what is the risk so risk in the sense uh, while doing the audit or uh, when it comes to a compliance frameworks and these things so main aspect is here cia triad right confidentiality integrity and availability that is the risk what we are going to face okay so if someone hacks into our uh, database uh, that is the confidentiality risk availability risk right so our confidential uh, details are exploited correct so that is the risk cia okay uh, which which is applicable here uh, if we encounter a uh, risk called email hacking okay if someone hacked into your email uh, uh, email server or your uh, gmail or something like that so what is the risk uh, so risk i will tell you uh, like uh, confidentiality and integrity okay so what is the vulnerability uh, what you can expect from here email hacking so if someone hacked into email okay what is the vulnerability of that one okay weak passwords exactly information leakage okay uh, weak password weak password policy okay uh, not that uh, much of uh, knowledge or uh, no uh, employment training on that part that is the vulnerability right uh, what what about malicious insider web server security patches are not updated okay weak or no network controls to email gateway yeah uh, this one is acceptable right uh, so that is the vulnerability okay uh, so risk in the sense of confidentiality and integrity so what about malicious insider insider threats so no proper training that can be countable right Vendor access. Lack of awareness, exactly. Weak role based access, okay. Okay, what about our DDoS attack? What is the vulnerability uh, if you faced a DDoS attack in organization? Okay, a no firewall. Uh, yes, anyone? Limitation boundary not set, uh, weaker network settings, buffer overflow. Okay. No input validation. Okay, fine. So, uh, uh, so, <clears throat> so if DDoS attack is happening or happened, so risk is uh, availability. Okay. So when uh, attacker targets on particular 
application validation failure okay okay uh, so uh, lack uh, so loss of availability so if attacker is targeting a particular server okay uh, it may be not available okay so when you are uh, in the bank you may heard many times server is low server is down that is the availability no right uh, exactly okay uh, so these are the uh, vulnerability and risk we are going to encounter so when you are doing auditing so you need to uh, check what is the risk ci based on the ci confidentiality integrity and availability you need to find out who is the asset owner risk owner all other aspect okay so coming back to uh, threat uh, risk response methodology so avoid dunce so avoiding the risk completely eliminate cause of risk so we are going to completely el eliminate that risk mitigate most uh, widely used uh, uh, response methodology which is uh, mitigation of the risk uh, reduce probability or impact of a risk okay so here we are going to uh, encounter the risk okay based on that risk we are going to assign uh, whether it is low or high or critical correct medium high critical if it is critical we are trying to uh, mitigate that one okay we are going to reduce impact of that risk that is the mitigation part okay so most widely used uh, response methodology and then transfer the risk okay uh, we need to transfer uh, that risk to the third party or uh, insurance is the last step uh, on the risk response methodology and then us uh, accept the risk okay uh, accepting that risk means uh, we are not leaving that risk as it is okay so we are going to mitigate that risk or we are going to avoid that risk again we are going to follow the compliance frameworks methodologies or we are going to uh, do the regular auditing okay surveillance auditing it may be quarterly yearly something like that okay uh, continue uh, continuous uh, auditing will be there okay so that that is the accept means um, okay uh, so risk assessment process identified the risk identify identify people at risk okay so identify the uh, risk owner okay then comes to the asset owner uh, for example uh, if systems are assigned by the it uh, administrator so he is the asset owner okay uh, so asset owner and the risk owner is are different then evaluate the risks okay whether they are low medium high critical then again record findings and implement a risk a response methodology and review and continue the process okay whatever the uh, compliance you can take we are going to follow uh, these are same steps in the uh, risk assessment or risk response methodology okay when it comes to hybrid versus cloud cl computing okay uh, so hybrid cloud we are going to uh, use combination of private with the public cloud multi cloud environment uh, we are going to use multiple public cloud providers and private cloud resources okay so that is why uh, multi cloud uh, uh, security is a major thing uh, in the discussion okay so when it comes to multi cloud security data protection is the major thing why because if you go back here uh, so data protection is the major thing uh, that covers all the uh, responsibilities in the cloud service providers okay uh, so even in a traditional way normal thing okay if you uh, in house uh, architecture uh, infrastructure in your company or in your client company so that is also uh, may, uh, we need to check uh, the data itself okay so that is the major one and multi cloud uh, security challenges what are the challenges we are going to face uh, when we, we uh, do a multi cloud security audit or uh, uh, thing okay diverse regulatory landscapes okay uh, so different region industries are using public uh, multiple public cloud uh, infrastructure so that comes in the first uh, stage uh, first challenge complex data governance uh, when you we are using multiple clouds cloud platforms okay so how the data is storing where the data is storing how it is processing is that securely storing somewhere we don't know where exactly it is storing how exactly it is storing 
okay that is what uh, we discussed uh, in that part transparency correct so complex data governance security concern okay uh, so for example if you are using aws or azure whatever the cloud platform is okay uh, we are not only uh, using aws or something like that okay uh, when it comes to security okay they may show you like uh, we applied these security policies we are using these protections right then again how much they are uh, accepting that one like how much they have applied uh, how much percent they have applied those uh, security policies correct is that 100 percent show we don't know right it's again based on sla service level agreement correct okay based on that agreement only you can check we don't know even uh, like uh, how much uh, it is secure okay uh, they are showing uh, but we don't know it is completely secure or not okay uh, we are not blaming the cloud platforms but still uh, when it comes to uh, security uh, concern okay we need to analyze these questions as an auditor so again uh, vendor management so there are many challenges uh, we may face okay uh, so vendor management in the sense like coordinating with multiple vendors if you are using multiple vendors uh, so that is also uh, we need to take care of compliance and security policies related to those platforms in a normal auditing uh, we may use the same compliance same security policies in multiple companies but when it comes to cloud that is a different slight difference in that one okay we cannot apply aws security policies or compliance to azure or google cloud or any other cloud platform so they have their own tools and security policies okay so that's why vendor management is also a challenge in the cloud platform or uh, during assessment uh, risk assessment uh, is it identifying people at risk or identifying the resources at risk uh, well question narayan so here we are going to identify resources at a risk okay whatever the resource is uh, people uh, at a risk is uh, on the stage okay uh, while you are implementing operational things so that comes under in that part so in risk assessment we are going to check uh, a risk a resource at a risk okay uh, as we discussed about email hacking so we assigned a email to a particular people uh, employees in that organization if it is hacked or if the data is breached from their system that is a, a resource we are losing for from that person correct uh, we are majorly uh, concentrating on a, a resource at a risk okay our resource even uh, that person or employee is also a resource for us okay we are going to consider so after mitigating that uh, risk a uh, risk then identifying that is again employment training employees training awareness training that is also risk right both are considered here okay uh, that is a good question i guess uh, then uh, when it comes to multi cloud compliance uh, is there any doubts uh, from previous slides or previous topics so uh, can we move forward then i think so yes okay I guess uh, all the uh, aspects we, which we have covered till now, uh, uh, that's those are basic thing. Okay. Uh, Raghav has raised. Uh, right. Okay. Uh, so when it comes to uh, cloud, multi cloud compliance, uh, what we are going to a look into uh, or uh, uh, yeah, Rago, can you uh, drop your question or whatever it is in chat box?
okay so inventory and classification compliance management network security so we are going to uh, see uh, these things thoroughly uh, in the upcoming session uh, before that one question um, how yes. exactly the workload the security identified in the cdsa sorry uh, there is a question from raghav uh, he is asking mm -hmm. How exactly the workload security identified and mitigated? Uh, we'll discuss that one uh, in the upcoming uh, slides. Okay, I uh, will cover that part. Uh, how we are going to uh, manage uh, risk and load uh, on the cloud platform, right? Okay. 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 Uh, so here uh, we need to uh, check the network security controls identity and access management uh, security data security vulnerability management workload security okay uh, so i guess uh, your question is that one only workload security i uh, will cover that part also okay uh, so uh, why we are using multi cloud so to balance the workload itself right so that's that is the major case uh, many companies are going uh, with a multi cloud uh, environment Right. Uh, so, when we are using multi-cloud environment to balance the load, <clears throat> that time we need to take care of data security and network security and access management uh, identity and access management security. Okay, and uh, automated investigation and response, uh, disaster recovery, business continuity plan, all uh, aspects we are going to cover in that one. Okay. Uh, so, cloud audit, audit uh, challenges or transparency. As already we discussed, okay. Uh, so if you want to uh, collect the log of a hardware or operating system, you cannot get that one because it is handled by CSP cloud service providers. Correct. Uh, so that is also challenge. So uh, if you want to uh, collect virtualization details, if you want to collect other uh, details which is handled by cloud service providers, you cannot get those things. Okay. And then again, third party admins, co-location, shared uh, responsibilities. These are the challenges which we are going to encounter while doing the cloud audit. Okay. So then again, uh, so when we are doing the cloud audit or multi-cloud auditing, okay, uh, requester plan and scope, purpose and objectives, uh, data collection, analysis and report. So uh, in traditional normal auditing uh, thing, so we're going to, we're not going to collect all complete data or something like that in uh, in-house in infrastructure itself, we are going to uh, do the complete auditing over there. But when it comes to a cloud, okay? So we have uh, some standard ways to collect those data, those logs, okay? Uh, maybe we are going to collect uh, logs with the help of different tools which are uh, assigned or used by those cloud platforms itself, okay? So here, uh, so you need to uh, check uh, what exactly the client wants, what exactly the client organization is going to adapt in the cloud environment, okay? So based on that one, we can use a different frameworks, okay? So as we discussed in the first itself, actors, stakeholders, okay, uh, that part, we are going to cover all the uh, details, what type of compliance that they want and how we are going to implement in the cloud, okay? Uh, so uh, who wants the cloud flow policy, cloud strategy, okay? Uh, cloud service owners, data owners, all other things we are going to collect in the first itself. Then, so uh, we are going to discuss about ISO uh, 27001, which is completely related to uh, information security management, okay, ISMS, information security management, uh, systems management, then again, 27017, uh, that covers major cloud platforms, okay, uh, major cloud uh, thing in that one. Uh, so here, what we can uh, see in the cloud platform is information security policies are in the place or not, okay, uh, that we are going to check while doing the auditing, okay. So information security policy is the major one, 
So most of the cloud platforms, they are uh, providing information security policies from their end itself. Okay, when you are doing, uh, for example, if you are using AWS Audit Manager itself, uh, there is a uh, separate uh, uh, thing is there in AWS platform. Okay, if you are using already AWS, you can check AWS Manager or Security Hub. You may get uh, security information security policies in that one. Okay, in ISO standards, so you may use our uh, other standards also. Uh, 17789. Okay, uh, then again, uh, technical specification 23167 and 27018. Uh, so this, uh, these are all uh, documentations uh, we can require while doing the uh, cloud, multi cloud environment auditing or uh, multi cloud compliance thing. Okay, organization of information security access control. Okay, so when uh, access control is a major thing in the cloud platform, then again, communication security systems, acquisition, uh, development, and maintenance, information security, incident management, logs. We need to collect all the logs. Okay, uh, then again, uh, compliance part. So, when uh, again, uh, GDPR. So uh, we are not going to uh, uh, all, uh, cover all the uh, domains here. Okay, so it may take around uh, much more time in that one. Okay, so GDPR. Now we are going to uh, general data protection regulations when uh, the uh, cloud compliance uh, want or uh, wants to uh, cloud uh, service uh, customers wants to add GDPR into their cloud platform, multi-cloud platform. So what aspect you are need to do is, uh, so we, here we need to cover data processing principles. Okay, uh, Article 25, data protection by design and by default. Then again, Article 30, records of processing activities. Uh, Article 32, which is a major one, uh, security of process. Okay, how much secure is that security of processing, uh, which comes in Article 32 of uh, GDPR, okay. Uh, so if you are uh, really good in uh, these things, uh, you can uh, refer uh, GDPR uh, uh, compliance uh, thing, okay. And then again, done data transfer outside the EU, documentation and uh, record keeping. So this is the major aspect uh, in multi-cloud compliance auditing, okay. So how the data documentation is done and uh, we need to keep the records of all the logs, okay? Uh, then audit and continuous monitoring, data retention and deletion, deletion policies, okay? Uh, as I saw is uh, like many cloud platforms have their own data retention and de deletion policies placed in the uh, uh, cloud platform itself, okay? Then PCI DSS also a major aspect uh, when it comes to financial uh, businesses, okay? Uh, they may concentrate on the uh, PCR DSS as well. Build and maintain a secure network and systems, maintain a vulnerability management program, okay, uh, VAPT. Uh, then implement strong access control measures. Uh, it may be uh, I, IAM, okay, identity access management, role-based access management, or something like that, okay? Uh, regular monitoring and uh, Test networks, okay. Maintain an information security policy. So, if if we uh, map all these three to uh, cloud multiple uh, cloud compliance thing, okay. So, major thing we are going to get is data encryption. Whether the data which we are using in that or those cloud platforms are they secure? Are they encrypted? With the strong encryption methodology, okay, we need to check. So most and major thing is data encryption in any cloud platform. If you are doing a multiple cloud compliance auditing or framework, okay, if you are using um, or mapping with these things, data encryption is the major thing. And then access controls, okay, whether the strong access controls are implemented or not, audit and monitoring. Okay, uh, so data residence and transfer documentation and policies, specific compliance. Okay, uh, so uh, all the these compliances, okay, ISO, GDPR, PCI, DSS, NIST, 
Cobite 19 or any other uh, soft type 2, whatever the com, uh, framework you can take. So we are going to map those compliance to cloud controls matrix, CCM, okay? Uh, so here there are 16 domains and 133 controls are there. Based on those things, we are going to map all those uh, framework, okay? So we are going to select which is applicable to that particular cloud compliance, okay? Or uh, which particular business or organization. Based on that one, we are going to do the auditing. Okay, hope uh, this one is clear, I guess. Any uh, doubts or any queries? Uh, I can see one question from again from Raghav Rachudi, but that is not specific to this particular one. But then, can I ask you on that? Yeah, yeah, please. Okay. Uh, in multi cloud environment, there are lots of challenges during vendor migration. Uh, sorry, uh, okay. Yes, Mahesh. Uh, is it audible? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah, Okay. In multi-cloud environment, there are lots of challenges during vendor migration. One of the key risk areas is how to ensure the humongous enterprise data that has been properly migrated and further that the data existing with the previous vendor has been destroyed to ensure data security and safety. And then I don't know whether it is a question or whether it is a comment. Okay, the oh, no, I guess it's a question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so when you are migrating from a, a local infrastructure to a cloud, that is not a big deal. So some companies, uh, they may hold uh, important data, financial data, or many uh, data in, in premises itself, not completely into cloud because of security issues, data center security issues. Okay. Uh, so when it it is from one cloud to another cloud, migrating from that one, or you are migrating from the premises thing, okay? You need to check with the SLA itself, okay? Uh, we, like uh, in some uh, so situation, uh, you need to check with the, uh, you if you have any in uh, access to that old uh, database, data center, okay? You need to check all the, um, uh, Datas are migrated around with the help of few tools out there uh, to use based on the cloud platforms, different cloud platform. Okay, uh, so if you migrate it completely, then only you can access in other cloud platform. Okay, uh, so sometimes you may access in half itself, but you can check with the help of few tools. CloudWatch is there, cloud uh, uh, monitoring is there in the AWS. Uh, from that one, you, you may check. Okay. Okay. So if it is in a cloud, it's easy to uh, migrate. Okay. Uh, I guess if you migrated from one cloud to another cloud, uh, in uh, with the help of data, uh, this one, uh, this control, uh, data residence and transfer, based on that one, you can check whether it is there or not. Okay. data re retention policy based on that one uh, you can uh, do the uh, do confirm with that data whether it is there or not i hope uh, this question is clear Okay, uh, well, uh, so uh, 16 domains, uh, application and
Mahesh, it's not a sound. Uh, oh, sorry, I I have been uh, locked out from the session. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, I guess is my screen visible? A screen is visible. Yes, it is visible. Uh, am I audible? You are audible. Yes. Yeah. Uh, please. Uh, sorry. Uh, governance and uh, risk management. Okay. Uh. Uh, human resource, uh, security, uh, identity and access management, uh, infrastructure and virtualization. Okay. Uh, so these are the uh, controls we are going to apply. Map with these compliance, any compliance you can take. Okay. We are going to map with the cloud controls matrix. Based on that one, we are going to assign uh, risk uh, levels. Okay. It may be high critical media. And then again, we are going to mitigate those uh, risk based on that uh, risk okay it may be uh, asset based threat based okay then again uh, domains uh, so uh, here uh, i have created a, a general checklist for all cloud platforms okay uh, so there are many uh, checklists uh, checklists are there uh, 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 when it, you go to uh, aws there are many around uh, you can uh, go with around uh, 100 and uh, 100 plus audit checklist uh, same goes with uh, azure and uh, cloud uh, google cloud okay uh, uh, generalizing things uh, i have just added a few uh, steps here audit steps okay when it comes to identity and access management iam okay uh, so as i uh, as we discussed uh, identity and access management data encryption uh, network security uh, these are the major aspects which you need to uh, do the audit in the cloud platform. Okay. Uh, so when it comes to identity and access management domain, okay, uh, identity and access management uh, in all uh, compliance and frameworks, verify uh, that uh, multi-factor authentication is enforced for all uh, privileged accounts and sensitive data access. Okay. Uh, Role-based access control, uh, you need to review that also, uh, policies, okay? Uh, ensure users have appropriate uh, access permissions. So in audit remark, so uh, you need to uh, collect all the details and uh, give the remark here, okay? If it is not enforced, you need to uh, remark here. Uh, MFA is not uh, enforced, uh, that means it is a threat uh, to uh, access management okay uh, that is that comes under high as uh, nine to uh, seven to eight okay uh, what are the measures they can take uh, they will you can suggest them okay uh, review access logs uh, that this is the must okay uh, you you need to uh, do review access logs and reports to check for any unauthorized access attempts okay uh, at least around six months or three months you need to check uh, data encryption uh, valid the data stored in the cloud is encrypted with the customer controlled encryption keys uh, encryption keys in the sense so different cloud platforms are using a uh, different encryption keys tools okay based on that one uh, you need to uh, validate okay check uh, network logs uh, confirm uh, that data transmissions are encrypted or not okay then again review the backup configurations okay in any cloud platform you can take so backup configuration backup policy is the must okay you need to review that part also then cloud security policies review the cloud security policies which are already in place okay and ensure they are up to date and followed okay so all the uh, cloud platforms are using security policies uh, you need to check whether they are placed using and adopted. Verify that employees uh, receive a regular security training related to cloud services. Okay, uh, that is uh, cloud security policies. Then again, uh, security uh, logging in and uh, monitoring. Okay, verify that security logs are being collected and retained as per the defined log retention policies. Okay. So here, uh, logging and monitoring, verify that security logs are uh, collected or not, how they are retaining those things. 
okay uh, retention policy based on the retention policies uh, with the help of different cloud platforms we need to check again uh, review siem okay configuration is uh, effectively uh, implemented or not then network security access firewall uh, so this is also important uh, uh, domain uh, to cover while you uh, doing the audit okay uh, security access uh, firewall configurations and review uh, ids ips uh, logs vpn policies if uh, vpn is in place you need to check uh, that one also okay vpn policies are created uh, how exactly it is in use how the uh, datas are uh, logs are communicating or how the logs are uh, storing okay uh, then cloud provider compliance review the cloud uh, providers compliance certifications okay all the cloud platforms which we are in the which we are using right now it may be aws azure or google cloud uh, oracle whatever the cloud compliance or cloud uh, service providers are there they have their own uh, certification they're done compliance certifications you need to review those also okay you, you, you will get all those uh, compliance certifications in every cloud platforms you need to review those also okay if it is relevant when while doing the audit okay uh, conduct conduct regular assessment of the cloud provider security practices through questionnaires and audits okay if you uh, created any questionnaires uh, you need to uh, do that one then again uh, dlp uh, so dlp is the major aspect when it comes to risk okay uh, account uh, accessibility right uh, so data loss uh, loss prevention access uh, dlp policies and validate uh, that they are accurately configured to prevent the data leakage in any cloud platform so this is also a major domain to cover while doing the audit okay if the data leakage is there then that means uh, that is not secure enough then it may uh, lose company reputations company data uh, intellectual properties all things okay check dlp logs and reports uh, for any data leakage or policy violations okay so uh, these are the few domains uh, major domains we need to cover we must cover uh, while doing the aws uh, not aws a uh, cloud platform compliance auditing okay so there are many uh, other domains also they uh, bring your own device policies and other device other policies are there uh, so majorly we need to cover uh, these domains uh, based on the cloud platform uh, you need to uh, select domains based on the business based on the organization you need to prepare you need to up, uh, apply those domains so those uh, audit steps in the in that uh, company or organization okay so when it comes to aws uh, so we're, we are going to cover aws azure and uh, google cloud platform okay uh, not a practical thing we are mapping uh, all these three okay uh, which tools we are going to use different tools okay uh, so where we are going to find out those things all uh, these things are going to cover uh, based on the different domains which we already discussed here okay uh, so aws uh, you can find out uh, these uh, tools and uh, domains so policies management and governance security identity and compliance okay uh, so as i discussed as we discussed already uh, when it comes to cloud platform multi cloud platform it's not a traditional one okay it's not a normal one okay uh, uh csp may not allow uh, the uh, to audit their system yes exactly it may not allow but you need uh, so every cloud platform uh, if uh, already uh, they are uh, uh, there to compliances they have done certifications uh, iso pci dss gdpr nist everything soc soc 1 soc 2 certification uh, you need to check those things okay uh, already uh, they have uh, mentioned those 
what are the certifications they done and what are the uh, laws regulations implemented in that one what are the uh, regulations they have covered laws or they have covered geolocation they have covered everything uh, already mentioned uh, uh, those uh, policies okay uh, certification policies uh, in that one you can find out okay uh, for example if you're uh, using aws you may find out uh, those things uh, i guess or uh, in aws documentations okay uh, please do check with that one uh, you may get uh, the relevant uh, details okay uh, yes so uh, when it comes to cloud or multi cloud platforms uh, we have uh, different tools not uh, traditional ones uh, to do the auditing okay aws identity access management uh, iam is the cloud watch cloud trial config uh, audit tool is the control tower incident management aws account uh, audit manage manager is the okay so in azure uh, audit tools uh, we have active directory monitor key vault okay and uh, policy uh, azure policy security center so these are the audit tools uh, major audit tools not all okay we have mentioned here only few uh, major audit tools uh, so when we are mapping all these things okay uh, and google cloud platform uh, so if you are doing a native firewall auditing okay where you can find out uh, easy uh, tool is uh, aws uh, wf okay firewall thing you can just uh, type also in aws search uh, in azure azure firewall uh, in google cloud platform uh, google cloud armor okay uh, so if you are uh, doing firewall audit as we discussed here uh, here uh, security uh, sorry network security uh, access firewall configurations so you can access firewall configuration with the help of uh, these tools okay cloud and native uh, firewall uh, in uh, google uh, cloud you may get that one is uh, in armor okay google cloud armor so in uh, search you can search that one uh, if you are logged in, in any cloud platform okay and then uh, data loss uh, loss prevention uh, you may get here and network security uh, aws um, vpc virtual uh, network in azure and again uh, vpc in cloud uh, google cloud platform okay uh, so then incident response and uh, forensics okay aws security hub okay so if you if you want to use all these things all other other uh, uh, management uh, other uh, tools okay AW, AW, you need to enable aws uh, security hub okay so there are many policies are already in place okay uh, hipaa uh, pci dss nist already are there uh, many policies are there you need to check with those things okay uh, whether uh, if they are applicable if uh, they are uh, in place then you need to uh, review those policies whether it, uh, they are applicable or not okay you may make sure uh, security hub is enabled or not uh, if, if you are doing uh, incident response and forensic uh, auditing okay so azure uh, sentinel so in azure uh, sentinel is the tool which you are going to use uh, for incident response and uh, logging uh, forensic management okay and if we are using a google cloud platform cloud security command center okay command center is the thing uh, which you can uh, collect incident response and forensic logs uh, from the command center okay uh, is there any questions any doubts
uh, no uh, you no need to uh, subscribe to the, uh, these tools but uh, yes uh, some tools you uh, you may need to pay as per the uh, use uh, in aws azure and uh, gcp uh, google cloud platform uh, you may uh, pay something uh, to some amount uh, to uh, use uh, these services okay some are free major whatever the security uh, 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 policies are taken from the cloud uh, service provider itself okay they uh, those are free if you want to add more uh, services or if you want to add all other things like here uh, like um, cloud watch uh, azure monitor uh, okay vpc uh, i guess you need to pay uh, based on the requirement okay uh, everything is not free uh, you need to pay a uh, few uh, for a few tools okay so if it is uh, deployed from the cloud service uh, provider itself uh, then you can use freely those things okay uh, like identity access management is also free uh, thing uh, i guess a uh, cloud uh, cloud watch and the cloud hub uh, these are all paid one okay uh, based on the uh, requirement uh, you need to uh, use any other uh, doubts um, mahesh there are two question and maybe not completely related but uh, still um, the question from uh, ramachandra um, mm -hmm. we can have parallel setup for some time on both cip csp and have data archived on the existing vendor cloud. This is a, his assumption. Um, we can have parallel setup for some time on both CSP and have data archived in the existing vendor cloud. Oh yeah, you can have, uh, but based on the access control, uh, uh, it, it goes, okay. Uh, so if you have uh, complete access control uh, in both account, uh, you may uh, create, uh, you can have um, multiple uh, uh, things, okay, based on the uh, role, uh, based on the controls. Okay. One another question. Um, it's, I will not say question, but still uh, something similar to that. The mm -hmm. CSPs may not allow to vendor audit their system. However, to verify the compliance to various laws, regulations, only available sources, SOC 1, 2 certificates. Is the is there are any other ways available for the same? Uh, yeah, uh, for this one, I have already uh, answered. Okay. Uh, so yeah. you can uh, find out uh, those certifications or those uh, security policy related to whatever the uh, compliance already in place. Okay. Uh, you may get uh, from the, those cloud platform itself. Okay. Uh, like uh, as I already told, uh, in AWS, you can find out in uh, AWS uh, documentations. Okay. In that one, you may find out all the certification which uh, they have uh, claimed or they have uh, did uh, for uh, to take the security measures, uh, ISO related, uh, PCI DSS related, uh, GDPR, HIPAA related. All the certifications are there. You can check uh, in all the cloud platform and they have mentioned. Okay, uh, uh, you can go thoroughly on those parts. Okay, so thank you. Yeah, yeah. So AWS artifacts in the sense so we are going to collect the logs. A logs, a logs are a logs itself is an artifact. Okay, so any artifact like uh, firewall logs, or data loss prevention, uh, or policies. Okay, network security BPC uh, log. Okay, incident response uh, and forensic logs. Uh, these are the artifacts which we're going to collect from the AWS. Okay, so identity access management, uh, what are the uh, access or uh, uh, management are in the in place. Okay, uh, uh, two-factor authentication logs, uh, RBC, role-based access control policies uh, are there or not. Okay, uh, we need to collect all the uh, logs, access logs. So these are the artifacts we can collect from the AWS, uh, not only uh, from the AWS or any other cloud platform. So if we are discussing uh, only on the AWS, there are many uh, 
uh, audit steps or artifacts are there you can collect okay uh, as we seen already network log backup logs uh, cloud logs uh, information security logs uh, policies okay uh, business continuity planning business continuity uh, planning logs and uh, data uh, disaster recovery planning okay data retention uh, policies uh, logs okay uh, monitoring logs everything it, it counts it matters uh, while doing the auditing yes exactly uh, it depends upon the shared uh, responsibilities okay uh, uh, already we discussed about uh, shared responsibilities, what type of uh, service they are using uh, SAS pass uh, uh, or infrastructure uh, as a service. Okay. Uh, also, it based on the uh, cloud platforms like uh, public or private, okay, or hybrid. Uh, based on that one, we need to uh, go. Okay. Uh, that is the uh, complete uh, basic thing. Uh, based, uh, so in uh, actors only we discussed all these things okay uh, in actors only or a business or organization you need to collect all these de uh, details okay what exactly the business into and uh, uh, what type of service uh, they are using okay whether it is SaaS or pass or uh, infrastructure or uh, any other thing okay uh, whether it is uh, only on public cloud platform or whether it is uh, they are using private also okay uh, how, how the data is storing whether in house the data is stored or uh, uh, completely into a, a cloud platform itself all the things we need to collect then we need to plan the audit scope or audit details okay which are the domains we need to uh, uh, add uh, in this scope okay uh, what are the uh, domains we are going to cover in this one uh, what are the logs how artifacts we are going to collect uh, from this audit all these details are uh, we are going to uh, make sure uh, it covers everything in those domains which we are going to apply not all the domains we are going to apply okay so whatever uh, 16 domains are there it's not applicable all, for all businesses or or, or organizations okay based on the uh, requirement we need to apply for example uh, so if we are already using multi cloud platform okay uh, in that one uh, there is only uh, we need uh, data security and data center business continuity and uh, in identity and access management we need to uh, look into these particular uh, domains okay uh, if you want if the client wants to add both iso as well as pci dss Again, we, you need to map those things, okay? Based on that one, uh, we, we need to uh, go with uh, for, go further on the on that part. Uh, can we use uh, AWS Audit Manager? Uh, yes, you need to set up uh, Audit Manager, AWS Audit Manager, okay? After setting the things, uh, then only you can access complete uh, Audit Manager uh, uh, console, okay? uh is any uh, other doubts uh, regarding this one okay uh let me uh, go with this one uh yes uh, yes when it comes to uh, security monitoring and logging uh, so cloudwatch most used uh, in aws okay azure monitor uh, stack drive so these things we are going to use collect the monitoring and logging artifacts from the cloud platforms okay uh, though then access control uh, so access control domain if uh, we are looking into access control domain so identity access management iam okay uh, so we need to uh, there are in iam itself we can uh, create uh, 30 13 plus uh, what you can say audit steps okay here i have mentioned only two or three okay uh, yeah so again uh, access controls you can uh, find out uh, in uh, iam itself if you search uh, identity access management you will get in azure uh, you can get uh, access control details logs in active directory and then uh, in google uh, cloud platform gcp uh, you will get in iam itself okay 
and then compliance uh, aws config we need to set up then azure policy azure security center is there again azure security center you need to set up uh, in that one you will get compliance and framework related details uh, cloud security command center you will get those details and communication security again vpc virtual network and uh, virtual private uh, cloud like computer uh, you will get in the uh, vpc okay uh, so these are the major uh, domains which you can uh, cover and uh, these are the tools we are going to use uh, while uh, doing the uh, audit of azure and aws in google cloud uh, we may cover we may uh, use armor okay uh, dlp api uh, data loss prevention apis uh, google uh, cloud security command center stack drive okay all these uh, tools we are going to use when it comes to uh, cloud platform auditing of the google okay uh, Uh, yes, uh, so if you are doing uh, VAPT on cloud applications, it may be web application or whatever it is, okay, we need a special permission required from the uh, CSP itself, sir, uh, cloud service providers, okay, when it comes to VAPT, okay, vulnerability well, assessment and uh, penetration testing, they have their own uh, policies or checklists, okay, what you have, you can do, okay, uh, if you are doing penetration testing, what you can cover, what not you can cover. Uh, this, uh, in uh, there is a uh, permission is there. Okay, uh, we will find out while doing the uh, APT. Okay, so you need to uh, take the permission from the service provider. Then only you can do the uh, APT on that cloud uh, platform or cloud application. Okay. Yes, uh, we need a special permission uh, for VAPT. Uh, yes, uh, so any other uh, doubts? So whatever the framework you can take, whatever the compliance uh, you can take, you need to comply with the cloud matrix, uh, cl cloud control matrix itself. Okay. It covers complete uh, cloud. Yeah, uh, this one I have already. Um... so if it is not covered in service agreement uh, or in service providers okay uh, so it is hard to uh, uh, define uh, okay uh, here it uh, whatever we are going to uh, do auditing based on the service agreement and which is mentioned in the csp itself okay uh, in any of the public declaration from CSPs in their website, uh, they're not so clean. Uh, so as per my knowledge, if it is in not, uh, if it is not mentioned, uh, then uh, we are not accountable for that one. Okay, you will need to uh, reach uh, the cloud service providers. What whatever the uh, cloud service provider is there, you need to uh, reach them itself. Uh, as per my knowledge okay yes uh, so any doubts uh, in these things Okay, 
so i guess uh, we are uh, in the uh, we are into end of the session uh, Yeah, need to ask uh, Rajesh itself. Okay, uh, so uh, uh, we, if we uh, get another session uh, in future, go on the how to do cloud compliance auditing, uh, practical hands on thing. So we can uh, thoroughly discuss on uh, different cloud platforms uh, AWS, Azure, uh, or uh, Google Cloud, uh, or even Oracle. Okay, we can thoroughly discuss. So uh, we can apply uh, these tools. We can uh, open, uh, use all these tools and open all the logs, collect artifacts, all the details. Okay, uh, I guess uh, this is uh, it uh, for uh, tool session. Most companies uh, go uh, for the cloud, whether hybrid or multiple, okay, for cost benefits and advanced feature provided by other cloud providers to fit into uh, in their organization. When it comes to security and compliance for the business or organization, we need to look different uh, from the traditional approach, right? So when it comes to traditional uh, thing, we may use manual thing, a manual auditing list, uh, checklist, or else uh, we may uh, use some open source tools. But all those open source tools we are not going to use in cloud platform. Okay, we must uh, map with the cloud compatibility and the tools uh, and policies provided by the cloud providers themselves. Okay, you cannot use all the uh, uh, policies and tools uh, in all the uh, in other cloud platforms. Okay, uh, so I guess uh, uh, any other questions related to uh, cloud uh, compliance frameworks. Uh, so whatever the framework uh, you are going to collect, select now, uh, clients want multiple uh, compliance certifications like ISO, GDPR, uh, PCADSS, HIPAA, something like that. You need to map all those things with uh, CCM, okay? Based on that one, you need to uh, prepare a, a report and make sure uh, you are covering all the major aspects and you are going to mitigate all the uh, yeah uh, all the uh, risk uh, encountered or uh, while uh, doing the audit when you are collected uh, the logs okay so here uh, you cannot uh, access everything but you can access all the logs okay you can monitor uh, based on that one you can proceed further okay so uh, thank you uh, rajesh and uh, others okay uh, thank you so much uh, for giving me an opportunity to share my uh, little knowledge on cloud compliance auditing and thank you uh, vijaya as well uh, thank you uh, isaka uh, bengaluru uh, branch thank you thank you so much okay before i give it to vijaya Hey, okay. Uh, Mahesh, I, I call this a little differently. Uh, we always does the, the CPE and it was just a one way speak, <laughs> but this has become a little more advanced. Uh, it's it, it has become like a, um, it's education awareness and a training and it's a combined all of them. And it's a, it's a, it's a mix and match for everything. And you have literally um, and uh, educated everyone in terms of the difference between the clouds as well as what, from a complaint standpoint of view, what needs to be done and which generally nobody has much clarity, but you, one or two, a couple of your slides has given that more clarity for the people to understand what they need to do when I, when somebody talk about cloud security, cloud, cloud risk management and complaints, what they need to do, it is it was very clear and it, it's a very encouraging for me also to go through each of those, um, the, the cloud security details elements, uh, which was amazing, Mahesh. And uh, I, as I mentioned that it's not a CP session, it's literally an education session and which everyone can use it to learn and to use their for day-to-day -day activities. 
thank you very much uh, for giving such an amazing inputs for all of us. And I know it's a Saturday and a year end, but you still uh, um, and uh, agreed to conduct such a session at such a short notice. Um, once again, from Isaka Bangalore chapter and from all of us, including all the participants, uh, we thank you for your time, patience, and uh, your the calm approach to educate the people. Uh, exactly. Thank you for that. Um, and uh, uh, one more thing, and I, I can see more people, around 120 people stayed together for um, two hours approximately. It's amazing. And for everyone, and I need your help. I'm just sharing my screen. One second. Okay, note this one. And um, oh, sorry. Let me stop sharing for a second. Uh, okay, let me take a presentation. One second. Which that shared with. Okay, it's only will take a couple of seconds now. Okay, so what I wanted everyone to do, uh, every time when we conduct the sessions and we do, we need to take your feedback to improve our capability to deliver such more CPE sessions and also, and how do we make it better every time. And I request all of you to use this www.mendy.com and use a code Five double eight three zero four double six, five double eight three zero four double six, or you can scan it and provide your feedback. And I request all those one twenty and one eighty now people to at least hundred plus people to provide your feedback for us to um, give more chance for multiple speakers. And this will also help us to uh, like this time and a couple of uh, small small gaps and. Uh, that we, we will be able to uh, uh, address that in the future. Um, and then I request everyone to provide your feedback. And at the same time, once again, I would like to share this. Um, this is very small, and uh, but this will be very valuable for all of you to take certification. Uh, there are five key certification which we generally look at. CISA, CISM, CRISC, then the latest entrance of uh, CGIT and the CDPSE. Uh, CDPIC is literally a privacy and uh, CISA for the auditor, system for the uh, CISO, CIO kind of team and the CGAT is specifically for uh, the um, uh, CISOs. Uh, and I request all of you and uh, to share this with your colleagues and uh, to participate. And also this is an event uh, by 31st December and all of you needs to um, renew the, your membership. And uh, we, we request all of you to be part of Bangalore chapter. It is only $10 to become the B Bangalore chapter member. It was 20 and we reduced to 10 this uh, la the last year. So once again, and I request all of you to uh, uh, renew your membership and ensure that you update your CPE in the portal well before 31st December. Uh, many time I get at least uh, uh, 40 to 50 queries in a month stating that my certificate expired because I did not update my CPE. So uh, in order to reduce that, uh, at least I request everyone go and update. And these sessions will give you two CPE. And if you look at that from Isaka Bangalore chapter, we conduct approximately 20 plus sessions. 20 into two itself 40 plus our 14 hours of uh, annual conference and plus some uh, couple of other classes. Generally, all the people, Bangalore chapter member will get around the 60 hours of CPE. Uh, hence, uh, there are lots of valuable uh, additional uh, inputs from us. Hence, I request once again to become the member of Bangalore chapter and renew your membership. Even if you are not becoming the chapter member, renew your membership to retain your credentials. With that, uh, Vijaya, back to you. Yeah. So before I propose my word of thanks, I would just like to say that our Isaka Bangla chapter is planning to conduct a one full day practical session on multi-cloud security in January 2024. Is it okay? So can we have a thumbs up from the prospective attendees to this one day physical training multi-cloud security program by Mr. Mahesh Basit? You can just put yes 
in your chat box otherwise. Is it okay? Okay, let me move on to proposing my vote of thanks. Yes, I have the honor of extending my heartfelt gratitude as a proposal word of thanks for today's session centered around navigating compliance in a multi-cloud environment hosted by Asaka Bangla chapter. A special expression of thanks goes to our plenary speaker, Mr. Mahesh. It was, sir, it was truly an honor to have a speaker of such expertise among us. Your presentation was not only informative and engaging, but also thought provoking. Your evident dedication and preparations were instrumental in making this session a success. Our sincere appreciation extend, extends to members of Bangalore Chapter ISACA, esteemed participants, and the distinguished guests for participating actively in this event. To Mr. Mahesh, ladies and gentlemen, once again, a big thank you. We are truly grateful for your presence and engagement throughout the productive evening, starting from 5.30. Thank you all. It was undeniably, has been a fantastic session. Thanks. Wow. And a very happy uh, Christmas and a new year, 2024. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mahesh. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you. Thank you once again. Thanks, Raj. That was good. Bye. <laughs>